Well, it's been a heck of a week for musicians' birthdays. We have, to kick things off, the great Jackson Brown. Jackson Brown celebrated his birthday last Monday, October 9th. Uh, he wrote this song when he was 16 years old. Unbelievable. It was subsequently recorded by, by Nico, whose birthday, by the way, is next Monday. Uh, so we'll, a twofer for you right here. Mm -hmm. Interesting to note that the guitar Mr. Watkins is playing back there was given to him by Mr. Jackson Brown. <laughs> so, you know, it'll sound like that. Thank you for that one, Jackson, and Nico, and Rachel Price, and Sean Watkins. That was Jackson's guitar part. I've, Not I'm just trying. Jackson's guitar, <laughs> Jackson's guitar part. Thank you, Sean. Uh, well, I was excited to see this name pop up. Mr. Ray Brown, legendary bassist, played with the Oscar Peterson Trio for years and years and years. Some of the most memorable uh, placements of downbeats ever. Uh, Paul, you played this next solo in auditions. Is that, is that right? Yeah, well, growing up as a young, upright bass player, everyone always told me to listen to Ray Brown. So uh, Those were good people. Yes, it's good advice. Yes. And I learned this bass solo, and I used to play the licks from it in those auditions and stuff. Nice. And nice. serve me well. Here's uh, Ray Brown's exact solo from uh, the Oscar Peterson's uh, Oscar Peterson Trio's recording of Night Train. Happy birthday, Ray Brown. Thank you so much for learning that, Paul. Well, when we last saw Mr. John Prine on a birthday segment, we did, uh, we did Paradise. Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg? But so this is, this is our first repeat birthday week, by the way. We thought we, we better do Prine again. Uh, I was, I, I had fallen down a very, a very dark, deep Spotify hole uh, and found... I, I didn't, I was not aware of this song. I'm sure you are. Sabu visits the Twin Cities alone. Do you know this song? Uh, and his, his, he has a tremendous bit of banter before the live recording of it where he explains, this, this is a true story. There was a, there was a B-movie star named Sabu who would ride elephants into and out of people's troubles. Uh, and basically they would figure their stuff out while he was there, uh, he wasn't necessarily doing anything, but, but tending to his elephant. And, and then they would figure their stuff out, and he'd ride off into the sunset on the elephant. There was a movie uh, that he made that wasn't doing 
very well. And an, a movie executive thought that the solution was to send him, this is true, to the Twin Cities to go ride the elephant through a shopping mall in the dead of winter. It predictably didn't turn out that well, and that's what this song is about. Well, the movie wasn't really doing so hot. They said the new producer to the old big shot. It's down on the edge of the great Midwest. Sabu must tour or forever rest. Oh, well, Sabu was sad, the whole tour stunk. The airlines lost the elephant's trunk. The road, he got the rapies and the scabies and the flu. Oh, they was low on morale, but they was high on. Oh, look, ma, here comes the elephant boy. A bundle all up in his corduroys. Headed down south to Illinois from the jungles of East St. Paul. From the jungles of East St. Paul. From the jungles of East St. Paul. Who knew? Who knew? Poor Sabu. Uh, this was a, a, a new, this is a new artist for me. Also, in that very same deep, dark Spotify hole, I found the work of one Kaya Saryaho, uh, who's a tremendous composer. She, uh, last year, had an opera that she wrote called L'Amour de Loin, premiered by the Metropolitan Opera in New York City, which was the first time since 1903 that an opera women, uh, written by a woman uh, was played by the Metropolitan Opera, and the second time ever. Uh, I hope it doesn't stay that way for, for very long. Uh, here's a little, uh, a little taste, what we could figure out, of the, uh, the, third, the third movement of that opera. <laughs> That's about all we could figure out of that. But I strongly encourage you to go down your very own deep dark hole uh, on Spotify and find her stuff. I actually, I really love it. I think it's really great. Uh, chances are, though, she spent a lot of time in in Paris, that she was not heavily influenced by this great Parisian composer, Camille Saint-Saëns. Uh, the idol of France's composing youth at a time, still legendary, of course. Here is the swan. I can't imagine a better way to get back to G major than that. <laughs> so sorry to stop you, Brett. Miss Brittany Haas, thank you so much for learning the swan. And we'll end this birthday segment with Mr. John Lennon. John Lennon, his birthday was this past October.
October 9th, last Monday. Uh, and then also last week, we missed him last week, which was a, a darn shame, Donny Hathaway. Donny Hathaway, great singer. Uh, was uh, His birthday was October 1st, and the reason I bring him up in the company of, of Mr. Lennon is that I was recently reintroduced to this incredible Lennon song via a Hathaway cover of it that he did live a, a, a while ago, I think in the 70s. Mm -hmm. um, Sean Watkins back there introduced me to Lennon's recording of Jealous Guy way back in the day on, uh, on the Nickel Creek tour bus. And uh, it, was, it struck me how great, great songs are, how easily they make the transition from one artist to another. Here's John Lennon's Jealous Guy, done in the style of Donny Hathaway. Past. And my heart was beating fast I began to lose control I began to lose control I didn't mean the jealous guy Rachel Price as Donny Hathaway playing John Lennon's Jealous Guy. Happy birthday, all you fabulous musicians.